What's up guys, JR Raymond back again, coming to you from MRB Classic Pro Shop, where today we're actually gonna start a Pro Shop edition where we're gonna start talking about some of the things that are done inside the Pro Shop. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna teach people how to do the Storm Vector Layout System. So as soon as we get back, we're gonna look into it. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so the layout in itself is one of the most important things when it comes to working with bowlers and making bowlers better. Because uh, we can always make a bowler better by layout and we can always make a bowler worse by layout. If we have a bad layout for somebody, uh, the ball could roll very poorly for them uh, and, and make them uh, just really lose some confidence. Their ball motion is not going to be very good. They're not going to strike as often. Um, and the first person they're going to look to is the pro shop guy because they're going to say, man, this ball stinks. Um, what did you do wrong? So we want to really make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can to make these layouts good for our customers. So, um, and, and if you are a, a customer just trying to learn this for yourself to take into a pro shop, good for you. I'm glad that you are here trying to learn a little bit more about this. You should be. Uh, you should know just, about, just as much about this as the pro shop guy or gal, as long as if you actually care about getting better at this game. So... The first number we're going to talk about is the distance from your pin to your PAP. Um, and this, this stays constant. This is the same thing as using dual angles. The distance, uh, it determines your, the amount of flare that you're going to see, um, as well as the distance from your mass bias PSA to your positive axis. That's also going to be a determining factor for flare when it comes to an asymmetrical ball. Um, and that's why we're doing this on an asymmetrical ball is so I can show you this example. So. The closest to three and three eighths inches that you get the pin to your positive axis, that's the max amount of flare you're going to get out of it. As you start to move the pin away from that distance, you're going to see less flare. And as you start to move the pin closer um, from three and three eighths to zero, that you're going to see less flare as well. So um, basically, from here to here, this is your max distance. As you move this way, you're going to see less flare. As you move this way, you're going to see less flare. This is the max type motion right there. Is that that three and three eighths? Okay, so let's erase that. And we're going to now figure out exactly what we want. For this demonstration, we'll use, you know, my distance. I'm four and a half over by an inch up, so it makes it easy. Uh, I have one of these cool little Versa tools, the bow tie, which a uh, neat little tool. Has uh, the, the compass with the pin on the end, so I can actually make a marking right at any distance that I want and use it like a compass. Um, or if you don't have that, you can just use a ProSec, do the same thing and make a mark like this, moving the compass or moving your ProSec just like this across. I'm gonna use this um, and the first number. I don't, if I were to do three and three eighths, it would be right here, okay? So that little mark right there, this is three and three eighths right here. That would be your max area. We don't want that. For a ball like this, I would actually want at least five inches. So we're gonna do a five inch pin to PAP Mark right there, swing it all the way over, okay? So that's gonna give me a five inch mark. So now that line is my where my PAP will line up. The second line we need to figure out is the distance that we want the PSA or the mass bias to be from the, P, from the, uh, from the PAP, okay? Now this again, for at about four inches or three and three eighths inches, you're gonna see the max amount, you're gonna put the core or that part of the ball in an unstable position. The closer you go to uh, your PAP, the more stable you're going to make the core. The further away you go, the more stable you're going to make the core because now you're not putting it at that 45 degree mark or anything. Okay, so anywhere from uh, I would say three to four and a half inches is going to be your max uh, motion. So I obviously don't want that. I want to smooth it out. I want it less flare, just like we did with this. So I'm going to do five inches again. Okay, mm -hmm. so now I'm going to put this back on that mark there and we're going to go on five inches and we're going to make that mark so now this intersecting line is technically going to be your pap okay so now we need to figure out um, the pin buffer that we want the pin buffer is the distance from the pin to your vertical axis line so wherever i draw this line up and down this way if i draw it over here obviously it's going to be further away from the pin um, and that means that's going to give me less overall reaction down lane. The pin buffer is going to determine how sharp your motion is off of the friction at the breakpoint. 
So it's going to make its motion either quicker or slower based on this. So the closer to your VAL, the quicker your motion is going to be, or the sharper your, your break point is going to be. The further away from your VAL, the slower, the more arky your motion is actually going to be. So I want this to be uh, not, not super far, but a little bit further than normal. So we're going to go like four inches um, on this. And we're going to make the same thing. You're going to put that on there. You're going to make that mark from four inches down. Make sure it's a good pencil line there. Okay. And so now the distance from, now we're going to do is we're going to go straight from your positive axis to the very outer edge of that line. So we're going to put the pencil right on that line, right on your positive axis, straight through this line here, straight up. And this is going to be your vertical axis line. So this, now we have to figure out exactly where we go for laying the ball out or getting our center span, okay? Because we know this is our positive axis. So because that's our positive axis and we know we're four and a half over and an inch up, we're gonna go an inch down, okay? So one inch down there, and then you just draw that straight across from there, make a mark at four and a half, straight up and down. So now this is the center of your grip. So now you're going to be basically drilling through that finger or through that pen. And that's gonna put the PSA or the mass bias over here next to the thumb, okay? So this ends up being that five by five by four layout, which is going to be fairly smooth and predictable. It's gonna basically make this ball get into a nice stable motion to where we can do whatever we want with it. I mean, obviously we're not gonna be able to hook the lane because it's such a strong cover and core. So you wanna be careful with what kind of layout you put on each type of ball. Um, you don't wanna obviously put a super aggressive, uh, you don't always wanna put a super aggressive layout on a super aggressive bowling ball um, because then you're just gonna kill it. You're gonna make it basically puke in the front. It's going to do nothing the rest of the way down the lane. So be careful with what you do with some of these. And sometimes it's okay to go weak layout on a strong ball and strong layout on a weak ball to try to kind of counteract a little bit with what those covers and cores are giving you. So this is one way to look at it. Um, you can do it here. And if we want to figure out, so now what's the difference of what the dual angle shows us? We know it's five by five by four using the vector system. What is it if we were to use the, the, uh, the dual angle system? So we'll draw straight from the pen through the PSA. Okay. Now we got to figure this out here. Now we got to draw from the pen through there, through the math or through your positive axis. Okay, so now we know the two angles here. You got the two angles. So now we're just gonna line it up. This actually ends up being 65. And we already know the pen distance is five, so five inches by check that third number. By 65. So that actually kind of makes sense. You know, it's the same type of theory. You know, you're talking the higher the first number, the smoother or uh, the less hook in the front part of the lane you're going to have the core C. Um, and then obviously you already know about pin distance. And then the third number is going to be break point. You know, the bigger that number, the slower it's going to be off the motion. The closer to 20 that this number gets, the quicker. You know, so when this number gets higher, this number gets higher. You know, when this number gets higher, this number is going to be a little bit higher. You know, same thing. So it's kind of cool to look at and see the two different types of ways to lay out a bowling ball. And you can kind of compare the two. Whatever is best for you, you can do it however you want. A lot of people like the buffer system um, because the pin to your VAL is actually what they consider to be one of the most important things when it comes to motion. Um, so we're going to start looking at that stuff a little bit more. But um, from now on, at least now you know what the vector system is compared to the dual angle system. So you can do either one when a customer walks in and they say, hey, I want this dual angle or, hey, I want this vector system layout, you know, five by five by four. Now you know how to do it. So hope this helps. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're going to do a whole lot more pro shop type tips like this and try to figure out some other stuff uh, to help some pro shop guys and gals who are newer to the industry get a little bit better at um, helping their customers. So until next time, guys, I'm out. We'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe, comment, and like below, and we'll see you guys next time.